The reason why Plunder Patrol has taken a backseat in the meta is because of the fact that they don't really have a good time playing through multiple interruptions and struggle playing second. Now Unchained has the opposite problem where they are able to play through multiple interruptions, destroy boards, however they lack field presence. Today I have you guys the perfect mesh of archetypes that complement each other very well in their strengths and in their weaknesses. I have you guys Unchained Plunder Patrol or as I like to call it Plunchained. <laughs> What's up guys, this is Henry from Bamani Lounge, giving you guys a Plun Chain deck profile. This is a very cool, fun deck that I have put together for you guys. I think that this deck could be competitive, especially more so if the Haka Fibrax and Friends package saw the ban list. And come, come September, that might just happen. And if that does happen, I think that this deck could be a very good contender. And the reason why I think so is because of the fact that Plunder Patrols and Unchained are very good in simplified game states, which of course hand traps and other non-engine cards help us get to that point. And I really do like the way that Plunder Patrols play. They don't really require multiple cards to play the game. They have some one card starters and some other two card starters. And Unchained don't require as much set up as well so because of the fact that you're able to combine them you're able to get some consistency from the plunder patrols and get some power from the unchained cards and you raise your ceiling a little bit higher so i really like this mesh of archetypes but before i get into the deck profile i do want to shout out my sponsor bamani lounge bamani lounge does a great job at not only doing irl dual videos doing deck profiles but also we have a cool podcast the Shadow Realm Podcast premieres every week or so with fellow podcaster Zach Alder. We talk about the meta at large, as well as the decks that we're playing, the tournaments that we're playing online, as well as just introduce some cool stories that we have in our past regarding Yu-Gi-Oh! and other tournaments. And I think you guys would really enjoy it. And I know the I'm a So Angry crowd loves to be entertained, and I do think it's pretty entertaining. So... Let's get into their profile. I'm not going to be breaking it down by the boring way of monster spells and traps. We're not even going to be doing it by just the archetype cards. We're going to be doing it by starters, extenders, uh, removal, defensive cards, all the the card roles that are introduced in Patrick Hoban's book, Road of the King. So I do want to introduce you guys, Plunge Chained, in the most competitive format of deck profile as I can. So... Here we have our starter cards, starting with our Plunder Patrol cards. We have our triple white beard and our double red beard. Now, white beard and red beard are both one card starters in the fact that they can tag out to other extra deck Plunder Patrols. Now, white beard can also summon one from the deck if it's sent from the monster zone or the hand to the graveyard. And uh, red beard does something also similar where instead of replacing itself it equips to another plunder patrol so not as good but you do want to see some number of cards that you just normal summon and immediately beat impactful on the game state so that's why i do fancy the three white beard and the two red beard for our starter cards for our plunder patrols and then for the unchained archetype we have triple aruha and triple abominations Prison. So Aruha is pretty cool in this deck because of the fact that you can pop any card on your on your field to summon it from hand. However, it does come with the restriction that you can only summon fiends for the rest of the turn. However, what's cool about this mesh is the fact that all of the opponent patrols are, you guessed it, fiend cards. So yes, you do have some restrictions that come from Aruha. However, they're pretty much canceled out because of the fact that the opponent patrols are all fiends. And Whitebeard does have a restriction where after you use its effect, you can only summon Plunder Patrols, but that's really what you want to do anyway. You want to summon Blackbeard. So you can potentially pop a Whitebeard to summon a Ruha, and then use Whitebeard's effect to summon a Redbeard or any other Plunder Patrol monster and go straight into your Blackbeard. However, you also have other options opened up to you. You can just crash with an Aruha, summon a Soul of Disaster or an Abominable Unchained Soul from your deck, pop a card or a link with your opponent's cards going second. You can play through multiple interruptions before you even start playing the game, before you can even have to normal summon or before you even have to like really invest any of your cards into the field. And this is a very important playing going second versus trap decks such as Altergeist or Sky Strikers. It's just a very important key 
to be able to play through back row and multiple interruptions and hand traps without having to commit your normal summon or commit any of your other opponent patrol cards. So, uh, of course, we have more consistency with Ruha, with Triple Abom Ab Ab Abomination's Prison. Ab Abomination's Prison is a good starter card because not only the fact that you can start your hand with any unchained card, but if you have the unchained card of your choosing, you can also set it, pop it with a Ruha or a Rakia, and summon another unchained from the deck. So it's another way to get into more extra deck cards, summon more unchained, try to spam the field. So it's just a very good starter card. It also searches your traps. So if you want some field presence, if you want another interruption, you can search out escape, or if you want some recursion, you can search out chamber. So this card, is definitely one of the more powerful search cards now that engages banned and I really do enjoy the fact that you can just play triple abominations prison and pair that with triple plunger patrol shipyard now shipyard is very good because of the fact that you can you can search any plunder patrol card in your deck so you have you know six ways to search you know half of your deck half of your unchained cards with this and the other half of being your plunder patrol cards with this so you just have a myriad of ways to get to any portion of your deck at any time and of course both of these archetypes offer some unique advantages so depending on what you want to do you can pretty much start your hand from there this deck doesn't really have that many set plays however it does have a lot of cool interactions depending on the current game state so uh, we play the one terraforming as well to uh, search these out so of course we play the 15 starter cards that pretty much get us to any portion of our deck which I think is the strength of the deck and at any point if you want to crash into a monster pop a card with an unchained card or you want to set up your blackbeard play and get into your, unch your unchained cards or your pointer patrol extra deck you can do that at any time so it does offer a lot of flexibility for our extender cards we play golden hair the newest Plunder Patrol, as well as Double Bluebeard, the Plunder Patrol ship right. Now, Golden Hair is, of course, sort of a 1.5 card play. You could just normal summon and go into Almirage, and then pitch another Plunder Patrol monster, and summon it back to go into your Blackbeard. Bluebeard, if you open it with another Plunder Patrol, you can do something similar, where you can special summon it from your hand, and then it has a Dark World dealing effect, where you can discard a card, and then draw a card. So, it can help you get into your Unchained cards in a way. So I do enjoy playing the extended Plunder Patrol lineup. I like that these cards are all extenders and help you get into your extra deck more. So I do enjoy that. However, there are some weird hands where you're not going to be opening with just Plunder Patrol cards. You're definitely going to be opening some number of Unchained cards. So you have to practice how you're going to use those interactions as best as you possibly can. Which, if you can draw one of your 15 starter cards, it's not that much of a problem. However, you do have to be creative in some situations. And along with those, we play our one and one emblem and Plunder Patrol ship, shape, ship, shipping. Now, these cards both have the same thing in common, where they're not really that great if you don't open up strictly Plunder Patrol cards. However, they're cool to be able to search off of ship, ship, shipyard. And Emblem is cool because of the fact that it gets you into any type that you control or in your graveyard or any attribute rather, um, not just what your opponent has. So if you do have your uh, dark, if you do have your dark unchained cards in your graveyard, you can summon your Moork, which is pretty good for a first turn play. So it is a, it does have a cool interaction, and I definitely will like to work on these ratios moving forward but these cards do certainly get a little bit awkward when you mesh plunder patrol with another archetype so those are our plunder patrol extenders and then for our utility cards from the unchained archetype we have one rakia one disaster and one unchained soul now rakia is, is cool because it's another twin that you can just summon from the deck in a loop uh, with your traps and Disaster lets you link with your opponent's cards, which is pretty cool. If you're playing against Solomon Great, you can link with their Sunlight Wolf to summon the Unchained Link 3, Unchained Soul of Anguish, and then link with another monster to summon the Link 4. And it's just a snowball effect with one card. This is definitely a brick that you don't want to draw. However, you can pitch it off of Shipyard or the likes of Unchained, um, Unchained Soul, Abominable Unchained Soul. And this card is really the reason why you do play the archetype it, it's, it allows you to just discard any card to pop any card in the field. It doesn't target, and you can just ram over 
high attack molecules with it as well. So it's pretty good. It's almost like a hand trap in the fact that if you do draw and say a planet patrol gets destroyed, you can just drop it from hand, pitch a card, as cost, and then pop any card in the field. It does trigger your planet patrols. So it's another way to, uh, you know, pitch a white beard or a red beard and trigger their effect. So I do really like this lineup. Of course, you don't want to really draw these cards, but they're very good to have in deck and being able to access them at any point is very strong. So those are our Unchained cards. And then we play some traps. We play Punter Patrol, Booty, Abominable, Un Chamber of, Un of the Unchained, and Escape of the Unchained. So this card, of course, you probably know what this card does. It changes the attribute of any monster and brings back an un oh, Punter Patrol. This card brings back an Unchained as well, being able to uh, summon an Unchained from the deck if it's popped by a card effect. And Escape does the same thing, and it can also pop card on each side of the field. And it's pretty good. It's search These cards are searchable off of your your Unchained search spell, and this card is searchable off of your Punta Patrol search spell. So they all have some unique advantages of playing them, and being able to access these utility cards out of your deck is pretty cool. So we do play one of each. You don't want to draw multiples, but being able to have one is cool. So those are our pretty much like our engine cards. And now I, there is a very cool card that works with both of these archetypes that also stops the Honda Fibrax play. And that is Gizmic Uka, the fastest box of Fecudidity. So Gizmic Uka is a pretty cool card in the fact that if a card is special summoned from the main deck to, to the field, you can summon this card from your hand. And it does do burn damage, which is great in time. However, the main, the main reason why you play it is when it's summoned, you can target a card on the field and then summon a monster from your deck that has the same attack and defense with the same attribute. So, if, say, your opponent summons Haka Fibrax and they summon any monster from the deck, you can drop this, target the Haka Fibrax, and summon either Barrier, Barrier Statue of the Torrent, or you can summon, um, you can summon Unchained Twins Rakia, or even Redbeard. The Planet Patrol Matey. So you can summon either one of these three from the deck. Of course, summoning Statue of the Torrent stops your opponent from playing the game. They can't summon, they can't special summon any monsters except for water monsters. Rakia is cool because of the fact that it allows you to just, uh, you know, on your on your turn, crash into your opponent's cards and summon one of your other Planet Patrols and potentially pop a card. It's a very strong play in a simplified game state. It's very good. And Redbeard also allows you to play on your opponent's turn. You could target your opponent's card, you could target their Hawk of Fibrax and summon a Blackbeard and start playing the game on their turn, on turn zero. So Gizmic offers you so much utility and all three of your archetypes as well as a floodgate. So this card is extremely strong and one of the reasons why this deck is very playable is because of the fact that everyone and their mother is playing Hawk of Fibrax in their extra deck. So you can take advantage of that with this hand trap, as well as we play Triple Ash, Double Valor, and Double Fantastical Dragon Phantasme. So of course you want to be able to see some number of hand traps other than Gizmic Uka. Of course this card is only live if your opponent summons Hawk of Fibrax, which will happen most of the time. Definitely a card that you want to side out, perhaps in the Altergeist matchup, but for the most part this card will be live, and I would say a, a better Nibiru in most instances. And Ash Blossom, of course, is good on average, as well as Effect Bell or stuff via Haka Fibrax play. And Phantasme is very good for getting a body on board, which is which is something that you value a lot in this deck. So, those are our hand traps, and we have one Floodgate that we play. And it's a little bit gimmicky, but I do enjoy playing gimmicky cards in fun decks like these. Uh, it's called Power Sing Stone. So, for those of you who don't know, I did incorporate this in a previous deck profile on I'm a So Angry's channel in Cosmos. And to read what this card does, each time a monster effect is activated, you can place one spell, spell, spell stone counter on this card, max of two. While this card has two spell stone counters, face up monsters on the field cannot activate their effects and their effects are negated. During each end phase, remove all spell stone counters on the field. So what this card is, is a pretty much a pseudo skill drain. However, it resets itself every turn. So what both of these archetypes do really well is playing on your opponent's turn. So if you have an Unchained card that like targets itself to destroy, or if you have a any Plunder Patrol starter card, such as, as Whitebeard or Redbeard, to tag out on your opponent's turn, that places one 
Spellstone counter on this card already. And then if you go into one of your Link Launchers and you say Blackbeard, that's the second effect. So you get to resolve your Blackbeard, but then after that, once this card has two spell counters on it, neither player can activate Monster effects until the end of the turn. And what's cool is that even if you want to extend more, you can reset this back to zero, and then say you want to use Blackbeard on your opponent's end phase, you can do that. It, it goes back to one, but you get to resolve the effect. So you're locking your opponent's uh, effect monsters out of the game completely, while still being able to establish your own tempo and your own floodgate, which I think is just busted. But it does obviously come with the restrictions of not being able to to play it that well going second however it's just a very strong going first card if you want to play in permanence over that be my guest but i just like to have fun this format so i really enjoy playing triple power sink stone in my main deck so that's it for the main deck it's 42 cards there are some instances where you want to draw hand traps you need to draw defensive cards and you want to see one to two starter cards as well as one one or two extenders so in, in my head i didn't want to play just 40 and see my bricks a little bit more often so to get into the extra deck let's talk about the extra deck ratios we play double unchained soul of rage one anguish and one of the link four unchained abomination now rage you want to have multiple copies of because sometimes it does come up where you want to link with your opponent's cards uh, more often than not anguish is just on your turn so it's not as great but it does help you link up into unchained abomination this is a link three and you just link with one of your opponent's monsters so it's an easy way to make a link four you can also make access code talker so it's this very strong um, a generic way to get it quickly into a link through or a link four. So I really do enjoy the unchained engine and the unchained link monsters and I enjoy that it helps you get into Exodus Go Talker, which is completely one of the best cards of the format. So then we get into our Plunder Patrol cards. We play three Blackbeard, uh, double Liss and double Moark, one Bran, an honorary un uh, Plunder Patrol card in El Mirage. So El Mirage is there for the Golden Hair interaction. Uh, Bran is very good against decks that obviously set a lot of cards such as Altergeist or Sky Strikers, being able to, to banish uh, spells and traps. Mulwark is good against combo decks, any decks that summon a lot of monsters. List is kind of the same thing where it negates a lot of monster effects, being able to summon your, your spell and trap, your equipped Pun of Patrol Mulch is very good. And then of course uh, Blackbeard being the keystone of the deck and wrapping up all, all of the, uh, the two archetypes together. So. Those are the Plunder Patrol cards, and our last card is Area, the Water Charmer Gentle. This is for Uka. So if you um, if you link if you have the statue torrents, the water statue and the gizmic, you can link it into an area and then start playing the game. In fact, if you want, you can ram over a Haka Fibrax because it has 1850 attack, and then you could bring back the Haka Fibrax and actually just go into an Access Code Talker or uh, Unchained Abomination right off the bat. You can also go into, um, you can also just like try to beat over your opponent's monsters, but this is pretty much like what you want to do. And then you can use Access Code Talker to banish a Link Monster and just, uh, you know, start your turn two with a uh, pretty strong field presence. So that's pretty much it, guys, for the deck profile. Of course, there's a lot of information to talk about just because I have to talk about not only one, but two archetypes. So it's just hard to get all of the information to one deck profile. However, if this deck profile does well, I will do a follow-up video on the Maya Lounge where you guys can check out some cool combos and test hand interactions. Perhaps I'll do an IRL test hand video, maybe a combo video online, who knows. But if we can get this video to 100 likes, then let's hop over to Bamani Lounge and we'll get a combo video going. Try to subscribe to Bamani Lounge and, and check out our content. Other than that, of course, stay subscribed to my friend I'm So Angry and I'll see you guys in the next video. See you guys later. Peace guys.